All right, first up we have a revision. We have a revision. Um, so the Ultimate GPS, um, the, the Ultimate GPS was a wonderful uh, GPS module breakout that we made. And the company that originally made the GPS module stopped making it. So there's another company that started making it and they made two versions. Um, one is uh, the GPS version, which we still stock as PID 746. They also made an upgrade to the module, which um, supports uh, GLONASS, which is the Russian GPS system, and Galileo, which is the European GPS system. Um, GPS technically is the American system. The rest are called GNSS, which is like global navigation systems. Um, there's also Beidou, which I think is the Chinese system. It's not quite up and running yet, but this can be updated to do so. Basically, the, the RF system can support other uh, frequencies and, and readings of um, those other systems, which could be handy because if you are in a place where you might not, you know, maybe by chance at that time you don't have a lot of GPS satellites that are easy to read, you might be able to get Galileo signals or GLONASS signals, and, and you can still calculate location. They all kind of work on the same um, technique. So um, this uh, Ultimate GPS with the PA1616D, um, it's a little bit chunkier, but again, it supports those other networks uh, and it uses a little bit more power, about 10 milliamps more. But it has many more channels, 99 instead of 66, and it can uh, monitor many more satellites. So we have both versions. Next up. Okay, next up, we have more magnetic pin contacts. So these are super fun. You get two halves. Uh, and there's um, pogo pins, basically, and then um, magnets. And I'll show demo over here. Uh, this version has straight pins um, in its point, uh, 0.1 inch spacing, so it's wonderful. You solder it into your perf board or whatever. Um, the, the, the pins aren't super long, but they do definitely go all the way through a standard FR4 116 uh, thickness PCB. And then uh, you've got this contact with five pins, which is, I find, a really good number because it can be USB or I2C. Uh, and then if you try to plug it in backwards, it will repel. It is like the magnets. Cool. And do not let me do it. But then if I uh, flip it around, it will connect perfectly. And you'll get, um, you know, you can probably pass about an amp through each of these contacts. Uh, so good for power, good for signal, um, magnetic. We also have the right angle version. Let me get this up because I was zoomed in. Okay, thank you for, whoa. Okay, um, we have the right angle version, but this is the straight version. So we have, uh, you know, different uh, configurations. Okay, next up. Okay, these look similar, but they're not. They're not magnetic, but they are pogo pins that come on a grid. Um, and this is handy because usually we sell pogo pins individual. Um, and these are kind of nice and long pogo pins, but they're available in two by three and one by, oh, can you just show the other one? One by nine. And um, they're also uh, 0.1 inch spacing. And so if you're hooking up like some sort of pogo pin test jig thing and you don't want to like arrange the pads, you just want them to kind of like magically be in the right setup. Um, the plastic pieces hold them in place so that you get, uh, you know, all the pogo joy that you expect. Pogo, pogo, pogo. And then over here, pogo, pogo, pogo. Um, yeah. Perfect for test jigs or quick connects or what have you. Um, but you don't have to do the alignment. It's all, all pre-aligned to 0.1 inch spacing. Next up. Okay. Uh, next we have two Pi Zero spy cams. So these are for the Raspberry Pi Zero. They have the smaller camera connector. And uh, we already carried one like 65 to 70 degree angle camera. And some people asked us, hey, can you carry some wide angle lenses? And we're like, oh yeah, that's right. So this is 120 and then this one is 160 uh, degree range. So they plug into your Pi Zero, use them just like any, you know, version one Pi camera. I would work right now at the time of this videoing, I would recommend the legacy camera support because the new camera supports a little bit iffy um, and all the tools that we use uh, were legacy, but I can show, you know, I've got this hooked up to a Pi Zero. Frank. It is, I don't know why it says Frank. It's my camera, Frank. Yeah, I know. I think we should just name. Everyone, everyone wants to hang out with Frank, hold on. Here's my USB port, Steve. Okay, hold my on. My camera, Frank. So maybe you can. Uh, what do you want me to do? Okay, so this is the, hold on. This is 
backwards. No, this is front ways. So this is, okay, hold on, sorry. There's like five cameras and things going on here. I heard you like cameras. So I got a camera so you can camera on your camera. Can you, uh, can you maybe hold the screen in yeah. place? Because it's I can't configure both things. I'll hold Frank. Okay. No, okay. no, you're going to control Frank. I am going to control Frank. Uh, okay. It's so actually, that's, it's, it's Frank's monster, not Frank. Okay, so this is the, this is the camera. And so you can see it's very fisheye. Um, and this is the 160 degrees. So this is really good. So you're saying that the camera through a TFT, through a camera, through a TFT, through another camera. So the quality is a little bit better than you can see. It works. But you can see what it looks like. It's a very fisheye lens. So good for a security system or if you want to like do like nature monitoring or you just want to see like basically half of a room yeah. at once. Use Frank. You can use Frank. So hi. So it looks like I have a teeny head and a gigantic body. Yeah. Um, but when you tilt to the left. I actually finally look normal because I have a gigantic head in real life. <laughs> I do. It's a gigantic head. It falls. It makes me fall over. Yes. This is a little, this is a little freakish. Okay. 160. But the 120 is a little bit less intense. Okay. Um, and then the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, our customers, and all the folks who make. And do, Frank. And Frank <laughs> is. On. Yes. This is the finally released Cutie Pie Pico um, ESP32. Um, so this is. Um, a cutie pie board, which is our like teeny, um, you know, it's not quite a trinket, it's a little bit larger. It's uh, the same pinout in shape as the uh, Seed Shao. But um, we've uh, installed the ESP32 Pico V203 um, onto the back along with a um, USB to serial converter, the CP2102 or 04. And um, what's really cool about that chip, the, the ESP32 Pico, is it's basically an ESP32, the dual core Tensilica chip you know and love. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth Classic, it's got Bluetooth Low Energy, and it also shows like the crystal and a bunch of passives and all these other things that you need. So you see there's actually like not a lot of stuff on the back. There's, you know, a couple capacitors, um, there's the reset circuitry, and there's the um, Scilab's uh, CP2102 chip, but really, um, you don't need a lot of stuff because it's kind of like all packed into that one chip, including um, eight megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PSRAM, which is great. It means you can do a lot of very advanced IoT projects because you've got a lot of flash and memory. Inclu not only do you have that, um, you know, 512, I think, K of SRAM, but you've got two megabytes of PSRAM as well. And then on the top, we've got the USB-C for uploading and data. Um, the boot button and the reset button, if you ever need to, um, the boot button can be used as a user button. It's connected to GPIO zero, which after the program's booted, you can use that as an input button. Um, it's got a 3.3 volt regulator. It's got a little NeoPixel with power control um, and the antenna. And we, um, you know, made sure that this can be used in low power mode so you can turn off the NeoPixel and go into deep sleep and use about 70 microamps. And we verified that with our um, power monitor PPK2, which we really love. Um, and then one of the demos that we wanted to show was, um, just because it's fun to show it off, is um, it's, you know, it's a pretty powerful chip and there's a lot of memory. So um, we built this demo, hold on, doesn't like the screen, um, where you can play, um, here, maybe you can hold this for me. You can play um, Nintendo games and emulate Doom or, it's actually really hard to play through the screen. Hold on. I gotta re restart. Yeah. I really like Arkanoid. I hate it when I get to the arcade and I'd have to like pay 25 cents to play Arkanoid. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now I can play anytime. Okay, okay. hold on. I got, it just went blurry, so. Oh no, stop. sorry. Okay, so. Uh, but on the back, Oh wait, let me go to the back and then I'll, um, I'll focus lock this thing. Okay, so on the back, um, you've got the cutie pie, so you can just plug it into um, a breadboard or header. Um, and anything that's, the reason I was like showing the, the emulator demo is basically anything that is designed for the ESP32, which is like thousands and billions of projects, will run. It's got the ADC outputs, the DAC outputs. Um, you can run I2S on it. It's got the high speed SPI pins. Um, so kind of everything, just a little bit of everything you need to do IoT projects. And of course, a STEM IQT port on the front. Uh, you can plug I2C sensors onto it to make you know, more advanced. Um, you can add GPIO expanders if you want more GPIO, um, or you can add um, sensors that you can then send to um, your IoT service. 
and that's new products this week. Ooh.